Hey guys, it's Metacosis Perfect Schneros, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our biochemistry playlist. In previous videos, we talked about Michaelis Menten, as well as Lynn Weaver Burke. Today, it's time to talk about competitive inhibitors of the enzyme, or as I like to say, Cody the Capitalist. Normally, the substrate wants to bind to the enzyme, but not with Cody the Capitalist. Cody the Capitalist is very competitor. It will compete with the substrate. So the substrate will not be able to reach the enzyme because now Cody the capitalist will occupy the place. Please watch the videos in this biochemistry playlist in order. Especially the video about Michaelis Menten and the video about Lynn Weaver Burke. There are four types of enzyme inhibitors. There is competitive inhibitors, today's topic, non-competitive inhibitors, which is the next video, mixed inhibitors as well as uncompetitive inhibitors. One and two are the most important ones for your exam. Let's review. What do enzymes do? Enzymes lower the activation energy, making it easier for you to jump on top of the hill. But enzymes do not alter the overall delta G or the energy of the reaction. Enzymes do increase the rate of the reaction by lowering the activation energy. Enzymes are not changed by the reaction. They are neither changed nor consumed. They will not alter the equilibrium position. They will not change the thermodynamics and they will not change the overall free energy of the reaction. Here's the lovely enzyme. The enzyme has a front door, the active site, and the back door, allosteric site. The front door or the active site is the catalytic site. It has the catalytic activity of the enzyme. But the allosteric site, the back door, does not. In other words, active site is for initiators, but the back door is for regulators. Imagine that you have a restaurant. The customer, which is the most important person, should come through the front door. Government employees and public health officials should delve into the back door. Here's the substrate before the reaction. And then after the reaction, you have products. As you see, the active site has catalytic activity. It has broken down the substrate into two pieces called products. Recall that in the last video, we talked about feed forward and feedback mechanisms. Feedback is more common than feed forward. Inside the feedback, we have two subtypes, positive feedback and negative feedback. Which one is more common? Negative feedback, of course. Look at that. Here is negative feedback. When Z goes up, Z will say, you know what? We have enough of Z already. Don't give me more. So Z will inhibit the previous enzymes. This is a negative feedback. Put differently, we can actually inhibit enzymes. Don't forget that with antagonists, we get zero effect. Because some students say, oh, if I will get uh, some effect, let's call it positive 4 with the substrate, then when you add a competitive antagonist, I'm gonna get negative 4. No, wrong. You will get 0. You'll get nothing. You will not get the opposite. You will get nothing. If the agonist will give you 100% of the effect, like here, antagonist will give you 0. Not negative. Very important point. In other words, when Cody the capitalist goes and binds to the active site, the end result is zero. The enzyme is not gonna work. Recall Michaelis Menten? Yeah, there's the substrate concentration on the x-axis. There is the velocity of the reaction on the y-axis. The more substrates you add, the greater the velocity of the reaction. That's why it's a straight line going upwards. However, it does not go up ad infinitum. It will level off. It will have a ceiling known as the Vmax. Recall from math that if A is directly proportional with B, I can remove this proportional sign and put equal constant times B. So, the greater the substrate concentration, the greater the rate of the reaction. You can remove this and put equals constant. What's the name of the constant? It's the constant of Michaelis Menten, i.e. it's the Km. From this equation and using about 10 steps of math that you do not have to worry about right now, we can arrive at this equation called the Michaelis Menten equation. Let's get real over here. Will you ever reach Vmax in the lab? No, practically you will not reach it. So let's get humble. Down to earth, will you reach half of Vmax? Oh yeah, this is feasible. So half of Vmax equals, and you continue the equation. And then you see Vmax here and Vmax here? Yeah, why not divide both sides of the equation by Vmax? 
So you remove Vmax from here and it becomes only half and you remove Vmax from here and you have the substrate concentration on top, Km plus substrate concentration at the bottom. Let's do some scissors, arrange it algebraically, Km plus S times 1, we can remove the 1 because it doesn't matter, equals 2 times the substrate concentration. Look at this closer and you can write it this way, Km plus S equals S plus S, which means 2S. Did you notice something? Oh, I noticed that Km equals S. Exactly. Km is the same as S, which means if I told you that something increases S, which means shift to the right, it means that Km goes up. And if I told you that something decreased S, shift to the left, it will also decrease my Km. Okay, Metacosis, so Km is related to the substrate concentration. But what is Vmax related to? The number of enzymes available. The greater the number of enzymes available for the reaction, the greater the Vmax, and vice versa. But Km is the opposite of the affinity. The greater the affinity, the lower the Km, and vice versa. What's the affinity? It's the loving relationship between the substrate and the enzyme. How well, how strong do they love each other? So, Vmax is directly related to the number of the enzymes available, and Km is inversely related to the affinity. But Km is almost the same as S. Now let's go to work. What did Cody, the competitive greedy capitalist, do? It came in, bound to the active site of the enzyme, preventing the substrate from binding to the enzyme. Now, do you think the substrate and the enzyme will love each other? No, because the enzyme has betrayed the substrate, because someone else is binding. So the affinity between them will go down. That's why Km will go up. But hey, Metacosis, let me ask you a question. Is Cody the capitalist? Reversible, i.e. Can I do something to get Cody the capitalist out of the active site? Yes, you can. If you get me enough substrates, they will kick Cody's butt. And they will kick Cody out of the active site. Oh, so I can overcome it. Absolutely, yes. You can overcome Cody. And that's why the VMAX will remain unchanged. Let's do it again. Cody, the competitive capitalist, will bind to the active site, preventing the substrate from binding to the enzyme. The substrate will feel betrayed because someone else is occupying the heart of the enzyme. The affinity between them will go down, Km will go up, but since we can kick Cody's butt out of the active site, it is reversible, it can be overcome, that's why the Vmax will remain unchanged. Competitive inhibitors such as Cody the catalyst occupies the active site of the enzyme, preventing the substrate from binding to the enzyme, which lowers the affinity but raises the Km. Can we overcome Cody? Yes, we can, because it is reversible. Therefore, there is no change in the Vmax since you can overcome Cody. The mnemonic is Cody the capitalist is a competitive inhibitor, which means Km will climb upwards. How did we do this? By crushing the affinity downwards and the Vmax will not change. Okay, Metacosis, why do you call competitive inhibitors Cody the capitalist? Let me tell you a story. Imagine that we have shop A that sells cars. Each day, there are 10 customers that come to that shop to buy 10 cars. What did Cody the capitalist do? He opened shop just next to shop A and took five of his customers away from him. So shop A is sad. What do you think happened to the affinity, i.e. the attraction of the customers to shop A? Well, it went down because instead of 10 customers going to shop A, now we have only five going to shop A. So the attraction went down, which means the affinity decreased. So what's going to happen to Km? Km will go up. Okay. Did Cody alter the net sales revenue or the number of cars sold? Well, they were 10 cars before Cody opened shop and they are 10 cars after Cody opened shop. So the VMAX did not change. Cody decreased the affinity, which increased the Km, but Cody did not alter the net sales revenue and did not change the total number of units sold, which means Vmax is not changed. Cody the capitalist is a competitive inhibitor. Km will climb upwards because affinity was crushed downwards. Can you overcome it? Yes, you can. That's why there is no change in Vmax. You can say that Vmax will remain C constant.
Let's review Michaelis Menten. Here is my V on the Y axis, the substrate concentration on the horizontal or X axis. And then look at this. This is the line that goes upwards because there is direct relationship between the substrate concentration and the rate of the reaction. But then it does not go up ad infinitum. It levels off. It has a ceiling called the Vmax. We know this already. Where are competitive antagonists? They are here. What happened to the affinity? It went down. What happened to KM? It went up. When KM goes up, I shift to the right, which means KM is going up and S is going up. Because I told you before, KM is almost the same as S. When this is shifted to the right, because it's going up, S is going up. A higher number means I'm going to the right side on the horizontal axis. So let's remove all of this gunk and focus only on the competitive antagonist. What happened to affinity? It went down. What happened to KM? It went up. Going up meaning shifting to the right, because S has to go up as well. From this point to this point, I'm going up. S is going up and KM is going up. Awesome. But what happened to the Vmax? No change. Therefore, there will be no change on the y-axis. The old line and the new line will reach the same level as seen from the vertical axis. That was the Michaelis Menten. Now let's talk about the Lynn Weaver Burke plot. Where do we see competitive antagonist here? What happened to affinity? Went down. What happened to KM? Went up. This point is negative 1 over KM. Negative and reverse. Negative and reciprocal, which means negative negative is almost positive. So just recognize this point as if it was just KM. And I want KM to go up, so the competitive antagonist will shift it to the right. How about Vmax? No change. So let's remove everything else and just talk about competitive inhibitors. What happened to affinity? Decrease. KM went up. Shift me to the right. What happened to Vmax? No change. Therefore, what happens to 1 over Vmax? Also no change. So they will intersect at the same point on the y-axis, but they are different on the x-axis. Km goes up, Vmax does not change. Both lines, the old before the antagonist and the new after adding the competitive antagonist, intersect at the y-axis. Please remember this because later when we talk about the non-competitive antagonist, it will be a different story. Both will intersect at the x-axis. All right, quiz yourself. Can you draw a competitive antagonist? I just gave you the old line, which is the control line. Okay, competitive antagonist, I want KM to go up like this. KM goes up because S is going up, shifting me to the right. But Vmax will not change, so I have to go to the same line right here. And boom, this is my competitive inhibitor. Brilliant. KM goes up, Vmax does not change. Can you draw a competitive inhibitor using the Lin weaver burke plot? Of course, I know that they have the same Vmax, so it has to intersect with this point. I know that the KM goes up, so I have to go this way. And then look at my line. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. What happened to KM, please? KM went up. What happened to Vmax? No change. Both lines have to intersect on the y-axis. Quiz time! Which of the following graphs, A, B, X, or Y, represent a competitive inhibitor? Please let me know the correct answer in the comment section. If you like this video, you will enjoy my toxicology course on my website, metacosisperfectsnetis.com. If you want more graphs, I have a general pharmacology course on my website, talking about pharmacokinetics and pharmacodynamics. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense.